What are the limits of human strength and what does that limit look like? Strength means a lot of things to a lot of different people. To an arm wrestler, it looks like this. To a power lifter, it looks like this. And in China, it might even look like this. So to make sure that we're all on the same page, let's go ahead and narrow it down. We're going to use the sport of strongman, which is arguably the most well-rounded strength sport in existence. We're going to look at the absolute genetic limits of human performance and ask what is required to push those limits forward. And in the process, we're going to build the perfect strongman. Barbell Apparel's Black Friday sale is kicking off with steep discounts on any pants, joggers, or jeans. Do not wait. Go now. Now, we all think of muscle as the biggest and most important aspect of strength, and while it is certainly important, your frame is going to determine what your baseline potential is. It determines how much muscle you can hold and how efficient you're going to be when you actually go to use it. If you take a squat or a bench press, the most optimized build is going to be the ever sought after Chad Dachshund build. Most of your height is going to be in your torsos and your legs are going to look like little malformed nubs. Now, while hyper-optimized Hobbit builds have broken the sports of powerlifting and Olympic weightlifting, this actually isn't very useful in day-to-day -day life. It turns out out that the perfect strongman build is going to be two things, tall and apy. Tall because it's easier to load to high platforms when the platform is at your belly button. It also gives you a longer stride for moving events and it potentiates more mass. I know many of you are already feverishly typing pound for pound in the comments, but stop and think for a minute. If you had to ride a bird, you wouldn't pass up the ostrich because a roadrunner has a higher dot score. We're talking about limits, and that means maxing out the things that push those limits further, and with strength, that means being big. Capiche? So those prototypes in Strongman have already existed with Half Thor Bjornsson, Brian Shaw, Tom Stoltman, all men that are six foot eight or taller and weigh on the order of 200 kilos at their peak. Now height is distributed on a bell curve in the population. There are going to be a lot of people centered around the average global height of five foot seven and a half inches for men. And every inch increase in height becomes exponentially more rare. Be sure to remember this in the event that you see my wife on the street so that you can remind her that her husband is in fact a tall man. <laughs> The physical stature of the giants and strongman is very rare indeed. Six foot nine inches is estimated to be one in 50,000 people. And to push that limit a bit further to clear seven feet, you're looking at one in 10 million. So if you're mapping out the genetic blueprint of this perfect strongman, you might just look at the pituitary gland and think, I'm just gonna supercharge that sucker. We're going to infuse all of the gigantism that we can into this specimen. This fetus is gonna be flooded with more growth hormone than a deceased IFBB pro, and we're gonna make sure this thing makes Andre the Giant look like a pipsqueak. Now there is a problem with taking these genetic shortcuts. The flood of hormones that results in this egregious amount of growth tends to lead to wonky bone growth, leading to things like scoliosis. You end up with nerve problems from the bones impeding on the actual nerves and blood vessels. And even though the muscles themselves are technically bigger, they're not structurally sound. The flood of hormones can actually lead to something called acromegalic myopathy, and it's muscle weakness due to the growth hormone induced metabolic and structural changes. And it's actually not uncommon for changes in joint mechanics to cause instability, especially in the knee, shoulders, and ankles. You got Andre the Giant, who is seven foot four, was using braces and canes by his 30s. And colleagues in the WWF recalled that he could no longer lift opponents by the late 1980s, even though he was a monster. And Andre wasn't even that tall. Consider Robert Wadlow, who was a record eight foot 11 inches tall. I mean, we're not even in the human species anymore. He couldn't walk without leg braces. He had no sensation in his feet and lower legs, and he suffered repeated infections from the braces, which led to sepsis and his death at the age of 22. Okay, so maybe we should leave the pituitary gland alone. We can't get a very tall person just by waiting for an extreme outlier in the general population. We've had a seven footer represented in the world's strongest man winner pool in the form of Ted Vanderpart. We can also consider giants in the NBA like Shaquille O'Neal, who obviously had the capacity 
for incredible size and strength. Maybe one day more NBA players will wisen up and instead of chasing silly things like million dollar contracts, they'll join us in our makeshift strongman gym that our moms let us set up in the backyard. Now, short term, I do see the talent pool of strongman expanding to capture more people that are in this category. However, if we're going to consider man-made fiddling, then we have to consider that it's not an astonishing proposition that in the near future, tall parents are probably going to engage in some genetic selection to make sure that they have taller children. And we've already seen guys desperate to meet the unrealistic standards of women in the online dating pool go under surgery to crack their legs in half and extend them three to six inches to make them considerably taller. Dennis, getting ready to lift now is Sergei Akhmudov of the Soviet Union. His trainer has told me that he's taken anabolic steroids, Novocaine, NyQuil, Darvon, and some sort of fish paralyzer. Also, I believe he's had several cocktails within the last hour or so. All of this, of course, is perfectly legal at the All Drug Olympics. In fact, it's encouraged. Given the enormous amount of PEDs that state-sponsored sports programs give their young athletes and the fact that they seem to have no qualms with playing God, there is no reason to think that in the near future, we are not going to see young Chinese weightlifters in wheelchairs while their femurs heal in service of producing a master race of gold medalist Olympians. The average person, oddly enough, has an ape index of one, meaning their reach is about the same as their height. But if you want to be able to comfortably wrap around 400 pound sandbags and lock deadlifts out on your kneecaps, then you need a build that is actually more similar to swimmers, climbers, and MMA fighters. Michael Phelps is reported to have an ape index over 1.05. John Jones and heavyweight Sergei Pavlovich both have ape indexes that are on the order of 1.1. And at the far extreme, you have Stuart Jamieson, who deadlifted 286 at 60 kilograms. Because as is evident here, torsos just get in the way. Even if taller people tend to have a higher ape index, the odds that we get a seven footer with a John Jones-like wingspan is going to be about one in a billion. Now you might think that's a long shot until our doc here puts his online biomechanics degree to use. Now you might be crying, but what about my overhead press? In Strongman, that's not really much of a concern. Overhead pressing is one out of five to seven events typically, and the biggest pressers in the sport haven't typically had very short arms. Half Thor was actually one of the best pressers because sheer brute mass is such a big driver of pressing strength more so than just leverages. And that brings us to the next important piece. We've got our frame. What about the materials? There is one mammoth of a mutation that gives immediately more muscle mass, more muscle fibers, and more strength to anybody who happens to possess it. When the MSTN gene is completely knocked out, you get 60 to 100% more muscle mass and 50 to 70% more absolute force production. Now, while we've seen this in mice, we've seen it in cattle, we've even seen it in breeds of dogs, it is extremely rare in people. The one case study that we have is a child that was born in Germany in 2004, who was born with double muscle thickness, and they had 30% greater grip strength at age five than most adults. Okay, so far we've got selective breeding to guarantee our guy's gonna be over seven feet tall. We got the limbs cracked and reset, and we genetically edited this freak so that they are just double muscled like crazy. Yeah, I, I think he's ready. Let's see what we got here. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no, who could have saw that coming? I wonder if God also feels like he's in a permanent game of whack-a-mole. Grab some more duct tape, we're not done. You don't need genetic modification or a time machine to go back and swap out your parents in order to get jacked. You just need a proven training template and the means to personalize it to you. Base strength AI adjusts volume and intensity, minute to minute, day to day, block to block, according to your tolerances, to keep you in the pocket. There is no anxiously waiting for a return text from your coach in the middle of a bad workout. Everything is automated specifically to you. It could not be easier. This is not generative AI. These are my programs in your back pocket, personalized to you at a tenth of the cost of an online coach. So put your gains on autopilot this year. Go to basestrength.com. So if we want bones and tendons, durable enough to handle the immense forces that we're going to put our boy under, we can't just crank up bone production. Just like with giantism and even PED use, the geometry of the tissues gets all messed up. So even though there's more of it, it's actually weaker. It's kind of like using more steel to build a bridge shittily. 
Now there's a handful of genes that can show improvement here. You have the COL5A1 rigid variant. You have the TNC variant, which shows enhanced adaptation under load. And you have the LOX variant that increases stiffness 20 to 30%. Now since we're just picking genetic types, like their paint swatches at Home Depot, we might as well grab a few for insertion depth as well. The further down a tendon inserts, the greater leverage it has on that limb. So the same amount of muscular contraction is just going to lift more weight. But when you take that out to the extreme, the top two to three percent of the population they may have a 40 to 50 percent difference in lever advantage if you're looking at a freak of pound for pound strength and they don't have obvious leverage advantages on the lifts it's highly likely that the advantages are hidden in tendon insertions apply this to the immense amount of mass that our boys seven and a half foot frame is capable of holding and we've got a recipe for some truly alien shit but now we're at the point where we have to ask if the bones will even be able to handle this amount of force normal cortical strength is 200 megapascals and that's in an untrained couch potato that means that your fat cousin's femur could support a small sedan before snapping in half. To put this in perspective, Neanderthals were estimated to be at 1.8 grams per centimeter cubed in their bone density, which is 30 to 40% denser than elite human athletes. These estimations are higher than Brian Shaw's bone density, which was estimated to be five sigma or one in a few hundred million. But all isn't lost for humanity. There is still some genetic wizardry at play. A rare genetic case involving the LRP5 gene was discovered in a Connecticut family with bones so dense they had solid white x-rays. The family's density was measured between 2.5 and 3 grams per centimeter cube, which is 50% higher than Neanderthals and Brian Shaw. This made the bone near impossible to penetrate with typical surgical drills, and none of the degenerative effects usually associated with excessive bone growth plagued any members of the family. The only notable features they had were extra wide jaws and some bony growth on the top of their mouth. And I'd say that's a small price to pay. If we're gonna pull a Dr. Moreau and cobble together an eight foot human furry and make it run with five times its body weight, I think we're so far in that a bumpy mouth, really not a lot to worry about. Now the odds of getting this trait organically is next to zero, let alone with all of the other features that we've insisted upon so far. But in the near future, when you're selecting your athletic destiny, the way you're putting toppings on a pizza at Domino's, yeah, I'll take extra LRP5, hold the anchovies. We know that muscles produce strength and we've made sure that we got plenty of muscle, but we haven't quite unleashed it yet. See, your genes had the foresight to toddler proof your body. By putting a governor on how many motor units you can recruit at once, it makes sure that you're not flying off the handle like a drunk teenager behind the wheel of his Camaro doing donuts in the parking lot. Now with hacking your nervous system, we can start level one. These are common genes that bias individuals towards more motivation and more aggression. But these are still more normie gene variations are pretty common in the population. We're here to push the limits. So what does the next step look like? Level two involves the SCN9A gene. You might have seen this in a movie before. This is the genetic variation that makes it so that you cannot feel pain. No pain, no gain. How about no pain, all the gain? This eliminates one of the primary obstacles to training, and that is the sensation of pain and discomfort. Shoulders a little achy? Maybe for you, I'm about to throw this bench press to the moon. You're praying to Jesus to make it through that last drop set of lunges? I'm listening to Spanish phrases on audiobook. And just think of how much money we're gonna save on ibuprofen and DMSO. And we don't even have to worry about injury from tendon or muscle ruptures because we've already supercharged our specimen with tendons that could support the Golden Gate Bridge. Now to bring this back to reality, this might not be as cool as it sounds. For one, these guys can't sweat and you know, that could be life-threatening in a ball-busting do-or-die gym session, which isn't great. And also pain is kind of required to learn to not do things that might kill you. I imagine one of these guys tearing through a dirty bulk feed sesh after a ball-busting deadlift workout, pouring the olive oil on the large pizza and scarfing it down as fast as they can, only to start like biting their cheek and they can't tell the difference between cheek and pizza. And next thing you know, you chew through the side of your face. But remember guys, we're not here for second place. You gotta risk it for the biscuit. So how about I just breed a few dozen of these seven and a half foot myostatin disabled, 
pain-free mutant freaks and hope that like two or three of them make it past puberty, Bob's your uncle, we're setting world records. But guys, we're not even done yet. That was only level two. Level three is going to guarantee that we squeeze every possible ounce out of every single muscle fiber that we have slapped on this frame. This concerns the MAOA gene, often called the warrior gene. Now, when this thing's taking it easy, it's not doing its job. That's actually linked with higher aggression. And in extreme cases, when it's completely knocked out, you get Brunner syndrome. And while it's been associated with cognitive impairment, violent behavior, and problems with impulse control, the trade-off is, you guessed it, retard strength. I mean, look, we could have basically just manufactured our version of absolute bane, given our guy a super soaker backpack filled with trenbolone acetate and called it good. But with Brunner's, you get basically the same effect and you just don't have to carry around the backpack. So this is what we've got, extreme height and leverages that are plausible to see in our lifetime, paired with some genetic anomalies that are less plausible. But we know that the capacity is there, and if they occur together in the right mix, we could get something that is truly mythological. But by the time we can make these genetic edits anyways, we're gonna be like the aliens from Independence Day. All of our ability and our value to society is gonna be determined by our completely man-made exoskeleton, and nobody is going to care about the body composition or strength levels of the sad little alien nugget that exists on the inside. And on that note, I'm off to go buy a robot slave. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Leave your comments below. Till next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.